Education is a gift that opens the door to endless opportunities. It is our leverage, our stepping stone before we soar high once we have completed this bumpy, demanding, yet memorable and enchanting journey. Our very own College of Science has produced a lot of competitive professionals who excel in their various fields. When it comes to the matters at hand, arts and science aren't all that close. But who would have guessed that we have graduates and students who excel in both? They have stories to tell, and now is the time for them to do such. Sit back, relax, and enjoy with today's meaningful conversation. What a pleasant evening, everyone! Kamusta naman kayo? As we are nearing the end of this school year, we hope you are all hanging on tight kasi konting-konti na lang at makakapagpahinga na tayo. But right now, I hope you're all comfortable and settled while you stay with us for our Humans of Science Episode 1. I am Naya, one of your hosts for today. What's up, what's up? What a fantastic evening it is. We hope you have your coffee with you at kahit merienda na rin. As you listen to our episode for today, highlighting the humans of science and their gift as a Sumatian scientist and as an artist. My name is Samuel, one of your hosts as well. Grabe, it's so good to be back here tonight after the recent surge and dinner activities and ang rami pang in-betweens. But we guys hope you are all well and healthy. Ngayon, chill lang tayo at kalimutan muna ang stressors because ano nga ba pag-uusapan natin, Sam? Well, for today's episode, it is very interesting since we will hear stories from the eyes of a Sumatian scientist about her time in the university at syempre kung paano siya natulungan ng science sa areas kung saan siya nag excel ngayon. True and true, kaya wag na nating patagalin pa. Let's welcome our guest for our episode tonight. We are very fortunate and honored to have our esteemed guest here tonight. Alam mo ba that our guest for tonight is a USD College of Science graduate? She also used to be an instructor in the same college and is currently a WWF, Philippines Ambassador, and is renowned as our Miss Earth 2017. Let us all welcome Miss Karen Ibasco. Hi, Naya and Sam. Good evening, everyone. Hello, Miss Karen. It really is truly a big honor for us to have you here. Thank you very much for gracing us with your time this evening. Kasi alam naman po namin na sa careers nyo po right now, most probably you really have a tight schedule. So we are very, very mm-hmm. grateful that you gave us this opportunity to talk with you tonight. You're welcome. I'm, I'm actually happy to be here. Sabi mo nga, it's a chill night. So I think it's a great time to share my story to also encourage all of the College of Science students. Truly, it's an honor po, Miss Karen. Uh, alam niyo po ba, nakikita lang po namin kayo before sa mga viral pageant answers niyo sa social media. And now you are with <laughs> us here tonight. It has been years po since you were in USD. Do you ever mm-hmm. feel nostalgic po ba kapag nakikita mo yung campus? Definitely. Every time I come back, I couldn't believe that I finished my undergraduate degree on time. And then I took my master's in the same university and immediately taught after I graduated as well. So I stayed in USC for about eight years. So it's been my home for quite some time. And yeah, I always feel nostalgic every time I come back, especially when I pass through the main building. That has been my building for four years. I love my building. It's one of the best buildings in the, you know, in the university. Uh, many memories there. Definitely good and bad. <laughs> Pero I, I really loved my whole stay in USC. And it's something that I would love to encourage you to make more memories in the university as well. Because it's great. You know, it's something that I I always cherish and I always share to other people. Madami po talaga <laughs> memories na nabubuo no, sa main building natin. Yeah. <laughs> Ayun. Since you've mentioned po the main building, what are your favorite spots in our main building? In the main building? Well, I always stay in the physics department before. That was my our area. So we would stay in the laboratory, definitely, at all times. And sometimes we would do lectures in the lab. But I could still remember one of the best places we go to is the canteen. So we at the floor. Uh, where the chemistry laboratories and the biology laboratories are located. There's a canteen there. I love going there. 
Kasi that's where we would eat our lunch. Merienda, sobrang fast lang. And there's a, I forgot what it's called, but there's this place in the college, in the main building, may mga umbrellas doon sa baba, sa ground floor. That's where I study sometimes, kapag may breaks ako. So there's like a, I, I don't know specifically what it's called, pero tapat siya ng pharmacy. And then, yeah, but sometimes that's where we stay and where we talk with my friends and we would just study for a while and then go upstairs again. Because our classes would resume. But definitely, I enjoyed the canteen because that's where the food were. <laughs> Dito oh Miss Karen, yan yung mga open sandwich dun sa ating main building, no? And for our listeners na who have not experienced face-to-face yet, we are praying na sana lahat tayo makapagbalik sa school ng safe para ma-experience natin yung open sandwich sa cafeteria dun sa taas ng ating main building. May burgers pa doon. I think may footlong. Ay, hindi pa nakakatapak po ng main building. Sana po talaga yeah. makabalik na tayo as soon as possible. That's true. You gotta see the grand, uh, the grand staircase dun sa main building. Those are the things that you guys have to see. Of course, yung mga hindi pa nakakapunta ng university like the main building. It's something to look forward to. The main building is one of the most beautiful buildings in the university. And you yes. we're very yes. fortunate enough that College of Science is there. Yes, being one of the oldest colleges talaga sa university talagang it's a privilege to really be staying there. Mm-hmm. Ayan, so ano bang pag-uusapan natin next in line, Sam? Now let's talk naman po about your career in science, Miss Karen. For those who didn't know lang, Miss Karen took up applied physics for her bachelor's and nag-perso rin po siya ng master's degree also in mm-hmm. applied physics where she majored in medical physics. She also graduated as a cum laude in both degrees. Ayan, ma'am, you've mentioned all these technical fields, no? I'd also like to ask, paano niyo po na-realize na you wanted to pursue those fields, particularly applied physics? But honestly, I don't like being introduced na parang, oh, she graduated cum laude. Because sometimes, it's, it, it adds to the pressure. I, I really don't put it um, on on some of the resumes that I send. Because sometimes, the, people would ask, like, how do you want to be introduced? So, I really don't put the cum laude side. I don't know how people know. I don't know if it's on Wikipedia or on the internet. But I really don't put the cum laude side. But they just uh, research for some, some reason. And then I would always be introduced that way. But I'm always grateful. Every time I am, it's some it's a, it's an honor, you know, in the university to always be introduced that way and to some other places. But sometimes was okay lang na rin, walang cum laude para wala masyadong pressure on my end. <laughs> but yeah, my background is a bit technical, pero it, it's really good. Uh, I enjoyed my my stay. It was hard. I'm not gonna lie. My course is or has this language. It, Physics has a language that is focused more on heavy math. So that's really my course. Um, I love my stay, but it wasn't easy. My undergrad was hard. My master's degree was something different because when you take your master's degree, you're independent, especially when you pursue, you would want to pursue your doctorate degree in the future. Um, it's different from undergrad. So your foundation has to be good. And you can actually choose the path that you want. So there are so many paths for you to take in your math. So your basic foundation would be your bachelor's degree, and then it depends on you what interests you for you to further your studies in your master's and in your PhD. So it's something for you to, you know, enjoy. Enjoy your bachelor's degree. It's important for you to enjoy while you're learning because it would matter what path you would take, how much you do in your bachelor's degree. So one thing I am grateful for, I had great professors in my undergraduate from uh, the basic physics to the really hard ones to the basic math to vector calculus and so on. Sir Rico is one of my, was one of my professors before. I was so scared of him when I was a student, so scared. <laughs> he would make me cry. <laughs> but he is actually one of the best boss I have had. Because being an instructor in university was my first job. And I couldn't believe that he was actually the best boss I've ever had. And I'm very grateful for that. If you guys know Sir Yambao, um, he's one of the best math teachers in the university. 
and he is the only one that teaches vector calculus. So all the physics students will go under him for sure. So I really appreciated my memories like that uh, during my stay in the college design. A uh, funny story. My story is a little different from other people. You know, people would always introduce me as cum laude and so on. So you would think na parang I planned everything a long time ago. But when I was in high school, I didn't even know that applied physics existed. Honestly, I didn't know. So this was one of the courses that usually is open to a lot of students because usually I say a lot of people are not interested in physics. So I was introduced to physics. I mean, yeah, maybe you want to try. So I was going, yeah, you know, but I really wanted another course before. But when I was introduced to physics, um, funny that I actually enjoyed it in my first year. I started excelling in my math. I'm just grateful that in my high school years, my foundation in math was really good. So when I went to the university, I started my first year, I started excelling in math. And then I actually enjoyed, I started enjoying learning in general, you know, education in general. I would go to the library um, to really get books if I don't understand what my professor said. So I would research myself. I would try to answer um, problem solving and I would make sure that I need to get the right answer behind the book. And it really felt so fulfilling. And in my second year, I was planning to shift. But when I went into one of the career talks, because USC would always give you career talks, you know, for you to know what path for you to take in your further studies. I landed in one of the career talks that really encouraged me to go for medical physics. And my second year, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. And I've learned that if I pursue my path in medical physics, I can utilize my field in physics to help people like her. So I work in radiation oncology. We focus on calculating radiation beams to treat cancer patients to actually melt their tumor inside the body. So that's what we did. Um, that is one thing that really gave me purpose why I finished my undergraduate and then pursued my master's degree to really help people like my mom. Grabe po pala yung motivation to pursue the field, no? Yeah. It's really Definitely. to help. It's, it's, really it's a different story. <laughs> yeah. Nga po eh. Parang hindi po siya yung typical na pinili ko yung course na to because I want it or it's my dream job po. Tsaka grabe po, mm-hmm. um, alam niyo naman po, medyo yung ibang students takot sa math or sa hard, <laughs> sa hard time. Eh, iba po yung ano, yung Papang nyo para pasukin yung world ng physics. Yes. Kasi, actually, personally, medyo challenging po talaga siya. It, it actually is. Mahirap talaga. Like, uh, when I was in my freshman, a lot of my professors would really discourage students who never had a great background in math. Because my course was very heavy in math. The same with applied mathematics. So, they were not um, pushing students to actually a shift they were just thinking ahead of them uh, that you should think of your future if if math is not your forte or perhaps your passion it's something that you have to think twice because my course was so heavy in math both in my physics courses and even in my mathematics courses it was really heavy like i had four calculus courses even more than engineering so it's something that i a person or a student have to consider if you want to pursue continually physics, especially in the further studies. Parang, paano niyo po na-enjoy? <laughs> Masarap siya kapag gusto mo, kapag na-enjoy mo yung... So I always say, tell people na all of us have different calling. But you need to find where you're called for and just need to put your heart to it. So I'm gonna you know, share that later more when I started practicing my field. So it's really important to put your heart with what you do because it's so hard to push yourself to doing something you don't like it's you're, you're not gonna last like in life it's important for you to find your calling and your passion and it's important for you to understand your purpose while you're taking it if not you're gonna be burned out as in um you're just starting and it's gonna be hard for you not to discourage people it, it's something i've learned in the process grave grave hands down talagang <laughs> Talagang sobrang, ano po, sobrang, sobrang ano niyo po siguro as a student, no? parang sobrang sipag niyo po mag-aral, sobrang sipag niyo po <laughs> ng attention span niyo po, yung ganun kadami. Yeah. 
sa ano kasi sa course ko kasi pag hindi ka attentive tapos kubikit ka lang tapos hindi mo siya na gets hindi ka makakasunod so math is something na it's a skill so you have to practice it's not something you can memorize line per line it's it's a skill that you need to learn what to do per line so you can get to the right answer and the answer is only one you know it's not um it's not a range of answer it's only one answer so if you can't get the answer it's it's wrong completely wrong so it's a skill that you have to practice so yeah it's a little tedious but it's fun i i can say it was fun even though it was hard so it's coming from someone who already finished the path yeah and so, given for how much decorated for your uh, educational background um uh, I have a question lang po. How far do you think are you now in your career or in your field po? In my field, I changed my field. <laughs> I did. Pero I still use my field a little bit. So, hindi, walang tapon. Walang tapon in my field. I'm in the process. You know, people would always ask, um, are you successful? Like, where are you? I would always say that I'm still in the process. You know, it, it really depends on... Um, I, I can't say that I'm successful. I think it should come from another perspective of how people see me. But I know I'm still far from where I want to be. And I know there's so many rooms for me to develop. But I am in the right path. And I'm happy where I am. You're still practicing po ba yung ano, uh, being a physicist? No, I ha- I'm not practicing my radiation oncology anymore. I practice it um, years before I joined the competition. If, but if given a chance po, ma'am, na may opportunity po for you to practice po, are you willing to do it again? Yeah, I'm not closing my doors. I'm not closing my doors to going back to the university teaching. I'm not closing my doors to practicing my field once again. But I guess uh, sometimes your path change and there are opportunities that would open for you that you have to learn to maximize. And I believe that's where I am now. And I still maximize my field. I still use my my scientific background to be where I am now. So I, I still actually use my scientific background when I joined Miss Earth. So it really gave me an edge in the competition. I think that's going to be your next question for me. So I'm just going to make you ask it first. <laughs> oh, po. Speaking of, po, may tanong po si Miss Naya. Ayun, ma'am, let's dive into more specific questions. Pero this is, this time, you're right, it's something outside your science na career, scientific career. So can you tell us po how you got into pageantry and what motivated you to do or to join pageants? Uh, okay, this is a little out of the topic and from the science field, I guess. Pero I can still remember that when I wanted to join I cut all my ties in the university. Like, I cut my ties. I never told anyone I was going to join. Because I knew that University of Santo Tomas is a little conservative. Or, you know, I just didn't know what's the stand. I just didn't know what it was. And I wanted um, my choice, not backing up with anything else. So I never told anyone. I never told my colleagues. Only my closest friends knew. And I said... When I was already working in, in, the, in the field of radiation oncology, I had a desire to join because I saw professionals putting their field in the limelight. And I said, there's no physicist that ever joined. And I wanted to bring my field to limelight. You know, I really wanted them to know what I do. I wanted to share a message to people that can make a difference more than just joining the typical stereotype beauty queen. I, I didn't want that. I wanted to break the stereotype. Sorry. So what I did was uh, I researched, I researched, I trained because it was another field. I had a great background. I was credible enough for the things that I want to speak about. And that's where it all started. You know, I was able to use my field in physics, fused it with Miss Earth. And then I got to use Lehman's term and made people understand more about climate change. You know, I did my research because I'm not I mean, I'm not an environmental scientist. I just fused my field in physics with it because there's another path that you can actually go in environmental sciences that's connected to physics. I've, I've learned that in the process. So maybe in the future, if just at the back of my mind, if I want to further my studies, it would be more on the uh, environmental physics part. So yun lang, it's just at the back of my mind. So I started doing that. I connected my advocacy with my science field I saw my edge in the competition. There was no scientist. I wanted to break a stereotype of beauty pageants. That's exactly what I did. 
you know, I was an underdog in the competition because I never joined a uh, pageant outside of school. I never did. So sometimes, you know, it's important for you to maximize the opportunities given to you. Finish your school first. I really encourage students, don't join pageants when you're a student. Finish your school first. Have the credibility of the things that you want to speak about. And then sometimes, you see what happens is with the people I know, they didn't finish their school and then they started earning money and they don't go back to school anymore. The momentum was broken. So it's good that you have finished your school. You have a great credibility for the things that you want to speak about. And then go ahead and maximize the platform. So when I saw professionals joining and it really changed the arena in a platform of beauty pageants in the Philippines, that's when I decided to join. It was a tawag nila don sa Tagalog, parang suntok sa buwan for other people. Parang but makes her think she's going to win. But my drive was so strong. My desire was so strong that I really prepared for it. I prepared on the physical aspect. I prepared the mental aspect and so on. Like I used my savings. I really saved for the financial aspect. Like I had no connections in pageantry. Voila. I only had one person who helped me and then the current and chain reaction connected me with the right people, trained me, believed in me. And then I really did my part because hey, you just can't depend on your mentors. You know, you, you need to have a drive that would really push you to achieve that goal. And I couldn't believe in my wildest dreams that I actually represented the Philippines and brought pride to my country. So it's always something I'm very passionate about to share to people. You know, don't limit your dreams. Don't limit the things that you can achieve because you don't know what's in store for you. So I always tell people now, um, I always explain it with the analogy of a gift. Opportunities are like gifts. So opportunities are actually made for you. So a gift can actually be for you, can be bought for you. But as long as you're not in that moment to receive that gift, as long as you're not in that moment to risk that opportunity, it will never be yours. So the receiving and the risking of opportunities are very important. So the opportunity cannot be open for you if you're not there to risk it. Because that's exactly what I did. No, I risked it. I didn't tell the university that I was going to join. But after I won, I was so surprised that the university opened its arms for me. I even met the rector. <laughs> And that, that's how big it was. Like I met the rector, I met the secretary general, and they were just so proud that I represented the university. Sure ko lang po, so that's my journey in the crown. Po ako noon, time noon, yes, <laughs> ah, thank you. Nakasubaybay po ako noon. And grabe po yung <laughs> nung nanalo kayo. Salamat. <laughs> Ayun nga po, since kilala po kayo ng marami as the Miss Earth 2017 winner, um, can you tell us more po about yung advocacy na Brinot niya sa pageant stage? I started with my advocacy of conservation of energy and the use of renewable energy. Kasi what happened was I didn't know a lot about climate change. I didn't know about a lot about global warming. So I had to do my research. Sabi ko, what is it about? I learned that one of the biggest costs of global warming that leads to climate change is the emission of carbon to the atmosphere. And then I was like, how is this going to be connected to my field in physics? Physics deals with a lot of energy. So I thought, what is one thing that a lot of people have access to? Electricity. And electricity, a lot of countries still have sources of electricity, such as fossil fuels. So you actually increase carbon uh, emissions in the atmosphere when you burn a lot of fossil fuels, things like that. So other, there are other sources, but... Um, it really contributes when you burn a lot of fossil fuel. So electricity has a lot of sources in the whole world that uses coal compared to renewable energy. So that's what I learned. I started linking my field with environmental sciences. That's why I started with conservation of energy. And if there was a cause, there must be a solution and the start of embracing renewable energy. Because there's no carbon emission kapag renewable energy. So I, I really did my research on that side. And I really always put it in layman's term for people to understand. Because, you know, your, your audience here, are diff they're not scientists. They, don't, they would, may not understand what you're saying. So I always make sure that when I explain things like this, they would understand. Like, when you're in your house, you actually use these things. You know, you consume a lot of electricity that's very much connected to energy. So that's how I did it. You know, I've 
one of the great professors I've learned from the College of Science is that when you explain something, even a five-year-old kid should understand what you're saying. So always use it in layman's terms. That's what I learned. Opo, na magagamit ang physics sa pageant, no? Parang <laughs> very unusual. Yeah, very unusual. So that became my trademark, you know? Parang wala nang sumunod dun sa tatak. Kasi that's gonna be your trademark forever. That's what I always tell you. Find your edge, leave a trademark to people so they would always remember you. Yeah, grabe po yung... It's very educational po. Like, hindi po kami physics majors, but then that's something na, oh nga, we understand. Kasi... Um, these are concepts that are thought, taught to us as early as grade school. And um, to realize how impactful it is now, di ba? Like considering your advocacy po, talagang it makes so much sense. Kaya, I also have a question po. You, so you've talked about um, your advocacy as your trademark. How do, as, do you think po, um, how far na po kayo sa advocacy na yun in terms of uh, reaching your goal? Ah. When actually, when I won Miss Earth, my advocacy just widened. It became all of the aspects for the planet. It became like more on plastics, more on energy, and, and so on. But the reason why I actually connected with an NGO after my reign, and actually, I sometimes I work with the Climate Change Commission under the government. So they're the ones that makes the NDCs, they, they call it the Nationally Determined Contributions. There are policies in the Philippines for different stakeholders to follow. So we would be aligned with the Paris Agreement of the UN, of our country. So they're the bodies who actually make the policies. Sometimes I work with the Climate Change Commission as well and with other companies. But I really focus more on WWF Philippines. Um, WWF is one of the major and most known NGOs for the environment in the whole world. And I decided to join them. And we actually focus on four pillars. We focus on food security, water management, wildlife conservation, and energy conservation. So I focus more on the pillar of and the energy side. So they would always give me projects in that area. The Philippines is, uh, we're, we're getting there. I cannot fully say that we're there, but we're getting there. So it's good. You know, the whole world is actually getting there. We're not yet there, but we're getting there. But it's actually good that a lot of people are more environmentally aware nowadays. Companies would require this area, and even schools would actually require this because we're actually losing time and people don't know and people are not aware. So I'm just happy that we're getting a lot of steps taken, but we really need to accelerate the steps more. So it's something that we do to educate people. And I know USC is also doing their part when it comes to environmental aspect because when I was in USD, we didn't have that. Like, wala kaming environmental side. So I just started knowing about stuff like this when I did my research and attended lectures as well. Parang, uh, at least na after po ng pageant, na-widen po yung audience or yung reach po ng advocacy natin. Mm-hmm. No? So na we, all, we raised awareness about po this matter. And we used that platform po, yung pageant, mm-hmm. uh, para ma-ilad natin with the whole world. To add to add to add to that po ma'am, um what do you think are the most timely and relevant issues in the field of science na other beauty queens um should also start bringing into the spotlight other than your personal advocacy? There are, there are many. Women empowerment is definitely one of the biggest ones. Mental health, a lot of people are already advocating about that. So it's it's these are actually issues that has to be or have to be addressed. So it's a real thing. Mental issues, definitely women empowerment, are, are things that are very much in line or at the top priority. And definitely education. It's, it's going to be one of the biggest things that I start. Because when I started with my advocacy, I started with education before it became more specific. Now, I would always advocate about the importance and the essence of education. You know, a lot of people in our country, which, of course, is going to be connected with the government, um, a lot in our country, education may be available, but it's not completely accessible to a lot of people. We're very fortunate enough in the city that we can study in a great university, can educate us, can give us a great ticket to our future. But a lot of students, a lot of children perhaps, sometimes are robbed of opportunities like this. They're deprived 
because it's not accessible in their places. It may be available, but it's far from them, but not accessible. So education is one of the things that I really love to, ad um, to advocate about and to really share to people how important it is. So don't take for granted your education, even though it's online. It's very important. It's really going to help you in the future. It's something that you have to invest on as early as now because it's really going to help you. But I mean, I aspects. So yun lang yung mga top that I really saw that some of my friends are starting advocating about them as well. Yeah, but no, that's a lot, ma'am. Pero I would say na your personal advocacy mismo was very unique. And now that you've mm -hmm. um started to explain it to us kanina, talagang, oh nga pala no, parang being a beauty queen and there's so much responsibility and part of it is really giving a platform to these kinds of issues that we have right now mm -hmm. that's true <laughs> and before you start being opinionated it has to have a backup like you need to understand what you're really saying so yeah before i give my opinion i just make sure that i know what i'm talking about and i really researched on it because it's hard that when you're when you become a public figure, everything that you do is maximized, either good or bad. It actually sometimes you don't intend to do bad things, but it's just maximized, you know, by other people. So you just have to make sure that you understand what you're talking about and you use it wisely. Yeah. As time goes by, po talaga madami tayong madadaan na uh, issues or uh, other stuff na worth it na idalin po sa pageant stage para po raise awareness ano talagang hindi po tayo limited to what is happening lang sa locality natin and stuff ayun ngayon naman po it's another um topic naman po na pag-uusapan natin since tomashans tayong lahat dito this is the part that we are actually looking forward to also hearing um your tomashan scientist miss ka ah, story miss karen my Tomashian scientist story. Well, basically, since I'm a Tomashian, you know, I really came from the College of Science, so it's already my story. But it may sound cliche, but this is true. Like, when you're a student of USD, you're always taught the three Cs. And that is something everybody answers. <laughs> your competence, your commitment, and your compassion. Those are the things that I brought with me along with the technical things I've learned from the university. The university is going to equip you, so you're going to be competent, definitely. But you have to be committed with the things that you are going to do. So commitment is very important. When you go out of the university, it will depend on you what path you want to take. So utilize everything you're going to learn from the university and then start risking things for you to know what is for you? You know, maximize all the opportunities that can come to you. So you have to be committed in that area. And do not lose compassion for people. Um, I've always told this with my audiences when I teach uh, different corporate or other audiences I would have, that life is not all about achieving your goals. It's about building relationships with the people that you work with. So compassion is very important. Those three Cs are the things that you could just continually say when you're in the university. But it's something that you would apply when you start to get out of the university and start to see the world. Life can start for you at a young age, but you would really see the beauty of life and to apply these things when you're already out in the field and when you're trying to achieve goals in life. So yeah, as a Tomasian scientist, those are three Cs. I would continually repeat, it may sound cliche, but they're real. Like when you get out of the university, do not forget those three C's because they're very essential. I would always tell that when I'm interviewed, when I'm asked, it's something that the university has left in me and I continually practice that until now. Ano naman po yung mga struggles na encounter nyo while pursuing your studies po dito sa university natin? It's hard. Um, in my time... So, mahirap talaga. Mahirap yung, mahirap yung course ko. Actually, lahat ng courses mahirap. Hindi lang yung course ko. Lahat ng courses mahirap. Kaya it really depends if you really like what you're doing, if you really want what you took. Kasi lahat ng courses may challenges. Mahirap. May, mahirap yung thesis. Mahirap siya. <laughs> hindi siya mabilis. Actually, hindi ko, ano eh, hindi ko calling yung research area. Pero I really saw the importance and essence of research. 
Like that's why I look up to researchers. Although I'm not called in the field, I just understand the importance of what they do. So I struggled a little bit in my masters now um, when it comes to my my research because I, I was given a very limited time and I was under the scholarship of DOSD and I couldn't get the data that I needed and then the equipments that I needed were not available like all the problems started piling up and I felt like I really couldn't get it on the deadline like I needed my manuscript English edited by early February of that year and December now wala pa akong data it was so hard i was so stressed everything was like not working on my favor so may mga times ako na ganun i had a lot of problems with researches but i was able to finish it on time so may mga times na i really you would encounter a lot of rough roads it doesn't mean that if you want something it's always going to be smooth for you no but you wanting something that you want is going to be your drive no matter what road you're going to take either smooth or rough in your field so one thing i can also remember is uh during my undergrad mahirap mag group work kasi pag group work kapag isang ka grupo mo hindi gumagalaw eh isa lang yung grade so lahat kayo yung ilang grade niyo <laughs> I so, so in my field like konti lang kami ang thesis ko individual so I was already trained undergrad pa lang individual thesis. Tapos I was prepared for my master's degree na individual thesis. But of course, kapag may laboratories kayo, sometimes it's so hard to do a teamwork. Kapag hindi na hindi cooperate yung ka-team mo, so sometimes sobrang dependent sa So sometimes dun pa lang makikita mo na yung mga stuff. Struggle 'yon. Struggle siya pero ma-apply mo yang pag nag-work ka. Kasi hindi ka pwedeng magtrabaho na mag-isa ka lang. So you will really apply those things in the workplace because in the workplace must diverse nang tao. Diverse yung field, you have to work with different departments, iba iba yung behavior. So yun yung mga you have to really maximize. You you learn that as early as now as undergrad. And some of the struggles I've had was I people say I would be cum laude, that's true. Pero there were times I was also failing in some of my exams. So It's something that you just have to learn from your mistakes. Get them talaga. You know, you would always you, you cannot be perfect. You would still fail and that's okay. Um I've learned to stand up for what I believed in. If I believe na parang someone made a mistake, let's say um I could remember in one of my courses, I knew that was supposed to be my grade. I knew that my professor made a mistake in in putting my grade. I knew it wasn't my grade and I just had the guts to really come to her with so much respect on my end but then I said, "Ma'am, I think you made a mistake in putting my grade." And true enough, she really did make a mistake kasi alam ko hindi yun yung grade na dapat for me. Kasi pares ko ng grade yung classmate ko din nag-aaral eh. So sabi ko hindi, this is not my score. <laughs> so, I really had the guts. May mga ganun na akong experiences in the College of Science. So, some struggles, um actually all struggles really paid off in time so you really just have to maximize all your learnings either good or bad it's really going to help you and mold you to become a better person i know sometimes it may sound uh repetitive but it's true you really have to maximize it because it's really going to help you in time and ma'am so uh, i think we can all relate to what you went through not it not specifically that way but also we understand na it has never been uh it's not it hasn't been ever easy sa college of science so i i think um this is like a college specific question but ano po yung pinaka iconic na lesson na natutunan niyo bilang isang student particularly sa college of science or what did the college uh, make you realize Uh, in terms of being a person or being a student? One thing that the college taught me was that excellence is important. Because excellence is seen with your work. You know, the tagline is the tagline of College of Science is galing, galing, galing science, galing science. Excellence is important with everything that you do. So you have to give it your all. Um, it's important. I'm not telling you to pressure yourself, but I'm telling you to push yourself to the limit. You know, you gotta be excellent in the things that you do because your competence is seen as well in that area. So, yeah, that's one thing that 
the College of Science has taught me to always push my limits to reach my goals, to be excellent, but to enjoy it in the process. You know, you don't ever do it in a way that you would burn yourself out. Whatever you can maximize at that moment, you would always learn something from it. And it can always result to excellence. Hindi yung bahala na, you know. So whatever you've learned, maximize it. Always make sure that you're going to give it your all because this is a great training ground for you when you get out of the world. The world is harsh, like it is harsh. So you have to be prepared. You have to be prepared to show how excellent you are because there's so many competitions in the world, not just in the arena that I went into, but in the job itself, it's very competitive. So you have to make sure that you always give your A game, that you're always excellent. And you're always open to learning. That's one thing I've learned. Grabe, I love the college really taught us to be the best version of ourselves in everything we all know as parents. Yes, that's true. And in studying, in doing our projects, or in excelling din po yung mga passion natin outside ng science field. Mm, it's very helpful po to every student po, lalo na kapag mm-hmm. graduate na sila or lumabas na po sila ng College of Science. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, one thing I haven't shared Kapag hindi ka taga college, kapag hindi ka taga UST, ay kapag taga UST ka, dapat na experience mo yung baha. I'm not kidding. Like when I was a student, na stranded ako sa university kasi that was on doy. Um sobrang taas ng baha, like level sa loob ng university was bewang already, so wala nang makadaan na cars. So if you're from the university, you have to experience the baha, the flood in the university for you to say you really are from UST, that you are at the mash. <laughs> so I spent the night in the university. It was so cold, but it was worth I was just with my friends because I attended my class. I just want to insert that. It's something that it's a good experience for the Martians. <laughs> Ayan po yung sinasabi nila na college students are waterproof po talaga. Ms. Yeah. <laughs> Para kayo isda. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, so. Being an online student, talagang dahil sa stories ni Miss Karen, talagang napapalook forward ka at na-add yung list mong bucket list na talagang dapat ma-experience ko pag bumalik ako ng UST. That's true. So, be excited ngayon, to come back. Yes po. Parang ngayon, nililook forward ko po ma-experience yung mabaha sa UST because of your stories. <laughs> Wag lang ano, wag lang may may sugat or something, di ba? You just have to... Dapat may emergency kit kayo lagi. That's one thing I've learned. Dapat may emergency kit kayo kahit maliit lang. Yung mga pockets na like first aid kit, extra clothes, kung may kotse kayo, lagay yung silikod, slippers, yung mga ganun bagay. Grabe, apaka-helpful po na tip nun. Talagang hindi ko naisip magdala ng emergency kit. Powder pa siguro dadalhin ko, pero oo oh, nga, no... Bilang bahain ng USD at Espanya, kailangan natin magdala ng band-aid at napaka-important nun to keep ourselves safe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, kung may car kayo or anything, you can put it at the back of your car. Extra clothes, konting pagkain, tubig. Totoo yun. See, I'm exper- Actually, even now, it's one thing I always um, remember. I have to put that at the back of my car kasi na-stranded na rin ako when I was working. So, It's something that you have to always have. If you have a car, or kahit maliit lang pa nag-commute ka, yung mga important things like like first aid kits and stuff. Pero grabe ma'am, no? hindi ko na imagine na overnight kayong nag-stay sa UST noon. Mm, overnight! Sa Tanyanki building kami natulog. Kasi pinaalis kami sa... I didn't stay in the, um, in the building kasi at that time, the guards were making people go away from the college. I don't know why. So, uh, we, I was in Tanyanki kasi na-stuck din kami sa may Tanyanki area. So, the Tanyanki opened. May Tanyanki building pa, di ba? They opened for us. That's where we stayed, in the Tanyanki building. I hope, hopefully, may Tanyanki building pa kasi yung time ko, tapat yun ng, ano, eh, ng library. <laughs> yes, ma'am. It's still the same building. We hope to see you very soon po, Ms. Karen, if we are given the opportunity and the chance po, no? Yeah, I, I would love to see you and meet you guys. Like, people in the university again. Yeah. Hopefully, if there are future events. Yes, po. Yes, po. We will take note of that, po. <laughs> Thank you. Ito po, very pageant question po to. Bago natin mm-hmm. i-end yung usapan natin for tonight, Miss Karen, what advice can you give your fellow Tomasian scientist po, especially yung mga gustong mag-pursue ng kanilang passions in the same field as yours po? 
Oh, the people who want to join pageantry? Yes, but pageantry and yung pagiging physicists na rin po. Okay. One thing I can say, no matter what passion that you want to pursue, I always tell this to the people I talk to. There are three things I teach to people and three things I personally experienced. It's important that you want the path that you are taking. The desire is important to be there. And it's important for you to understand your passion as well and your calling. Next to that is you need to know your purpose while you're taking it. So it's not just your passion or your desire. It's important that you will make a difference in the people around you when you are going to pursue that path. So the first one is desire. The next one is purpose. And the third one is to do things excellently, no matter what your calling is. We all have different callings in life. But it's important for you to do it excellently because you have to work with other fields as well, you know, to make a difference in the world. It's not just you. Yeah, those are the few things I always tell people and they always ask me, what are the advice you can give to other people? Because those are the personal three things I did as well. Madami po talagang ano, naituturo at natututunan sa university natin na mag-guide tayo in the real world and in the industries na pinapasok po natin. No? Yeah, that's true. And I think, ano, I'll just like to point it out, kahit na sobrang technical ng educational background ni Ms. Karen, yung mga takeaways niya from her course and her master's and all that she went through, talagang applicable siya for everyone especially for us na parang right now we feel like sometimes we're clueless sa anong gusto nating path na itik mm, okay lang yan um, don't feel pressured sometimes if you feel lost it's okay I felt lost also but you need to learn to evaluate you know just evaluate the path that you are something that you want to pursue it's okay to feel lost I, I experienced it as well when I was a student it's fine And sometimes you would just understand your path more as your life passed by. Maybe not exactly now, but as years pass by and all the experiences that you will encounter, that's the time you would understand, ah, this is the path for me and this is where you're being led to. So, you know, it's okay. Don't be afraid. You guys are young. Enjoy your youth. Enjoy it. There are professors that will guide you, mentors. You know, Don't be afraid to ask questions. That's one thing I would want to explain and share to everybody. Don't be afraid to ask questions. But please ask relevant ones. <laughs> Curiosity is king nga po, Ms. Karen. No? Wag tayong mahihiyang. Sabi nga po, wag tayong mahihiyang magtanong. Yeah. yeah, ask. Don't be afraid. Uh, thank you po for uh, everything that you have shared to us, Ms. Karen. Madami po kaming natutunan. Marami rin po kaming nalaman about your... Uh, 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 story as a Tomasian scientist and where you are right now. Thank you for having me. You are truly an inspiration po, Ms. Karen. You not only excel as a Tomasian scientist, but also in other passions that you have pursued and continue to pursue po. Totoo yan. And to think na besides in the field of science, Ms. Karen also made the field of arts as an avenue for her excellence, sabi niya nga kanina. She is really an inspiration to many Tomasian scientists. Kaya we are very grateful na grabe, it's such an honor to have you, ma'am, with us coming from the same college. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing everybody in person. It would be a lot better. Yes, but hopefully po next semester, kung may face-to-face na, sana po makita po namin kayo around the campus, ma. Sure, sure. <laughs> And knowing how Miss Karen paved her way not just in the field of science but as well as the field of arts is really a gratifying moment for the College of Science. Right, Sam? I agree. The College of Science has indeed produced and still produces a lot of competitive professionals who excel in their various fields. Galing science, galing science nga naman talaga. That's right. And it just makes sense how Tomasian scientists are well-rounded people, just like our guest for tonight, Miss Karen Ibasco, a physicist and a beauty queen. Before we officially end tonight's episode, uh, Ate Naya, I want to know your thoughts and opinions from our discussions. Grabe sobrang raming, raming nun for me to sandwich, no? Pero, I think in general, parang having Miss Karen as an inspiration, she really embodies, you know, discipline, as well as excellence. Pag you never settle for less and you never do it just for yourself but also to be able to help other people. Ah, uh, oh nga pala, ikaw nga pala, Sam. 
Anong masasabi mo sa mga senior ni Miss Karen tonight? Ayan. Same with you, Ate Naya. Ang dami nating natutunan with Miss Karen's discussion and stories for tonight. Pero ang sa akin lang, ang pinakatumatak sa akin, yung uh, we should always present or be the best versions of ourselves to produce the best outcomes na gusto nating maibigay at mailahad sa audiences natin. Katulad nga ni Miss Karen, nakakatawa na may mga students ng College of Science or even uh, UST students na uh, ginagamit yung new found or platforms nila para, ay, alam nyo yun, mailahad nila yung program nila. And for example, kay Miss Karen, yun nga, yung uh, pagiging physicist niya, nadala niya sa pageantry, di ba? Nakaka-amaze yun. And uh, Miss Karen, may nagaana lang po, may nagre-request lang po, if Uh, pwede niyo po ba kaming samplean nung introduction niyo sa Miss Earth? Yung... <laughs> <laughs> My Miss Earth introduction. <laughs> Do you need a competition? Yung ano lang po, uh, kahit yung name niyo lang po in Philippines. Ayan. Ah, lag- okay. request lang po sa tech team namin. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, how I introduced myself, it wasn't my name. It was no. more on what I rep- Yeah, what I represented. But yeah, maybe now I can say my name and the Philippines. So how, how I introduce myself is Karen Ibasco and this is from the Philippines. That's how I said it. Grabe nakakakilig. Wala namang mo. Nakakakilig na po. Nakakakilig pa Grabe po. Usually, sinasabi namin before may age, parang ima Miss Earth wala. Pero usually, sinasabi siya like, um, Karen Ibasco, 26, Philippines. That's how you say it. <laughs> oh, grabe. Amaze na amaze po kami, lalo na nung pinanood po talaga namin yung Coronation Night. Talagang... Oh, wow! Thank you! <laughs> parang talagang sa atin na po yung Corona. So, memorize mo rin yung sagot ko. <laughs> so, dami na po nang napanood ko, Miss Karen. Parang naghalo-halo na po yung ano eh. Yung sagot? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think dahil kay Miss Karen, talagang masasabi natin na nasa Espanya nga ang corona. That's true. Tama, 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 tama. Kaya naman, Tomasian scientists, kung nabitin kayo sa ating discussion tonight, where you know more, we will have our second and last episode of Humans of Science where we will feature Tomasian scientists who also excel in the field of sports naman. Join us again tomorrow, same place and same time. Hmm, Ate Naya, sino kaya yung mga guest natin for tomorrow's episode? Secret, kaya just get guys. Don't forget to tune in again tomorrow for another episode of Humans of Science para makilala naman natin ang mga Tomasian scientists na nag e din sa field of sports. Tonight has been a successful and inciting discussion and thanks to our guest, Ms. Karen Ebasco. And of course, a big thanks to our listeners. Thank you for joining us. For the first episode of Humans of Science, the gift as a Tomasian scientist and as an artist. This has been Samuel, your host for tonight. And I am Naya. Take care of Mother Earth. Bilang na dito na po si Miss Karen Ibasco. Di ba? Ma-inspire tayo ng lahat tonight. See you next time and stay safe, everyone. Bye.